The Net Zero Energy Ready Challenge is a Clean BC incentive program and juried competition for large buildings launched in 2018. It provides financial support for developments targeting net zero energy ready levels of performance and aims to celebrate, promote, and learn from BC's most innovative and energy efficient projects. Integral Group and Vancouver's Zero Emissions Building Exchange have commissioned a series of six technical playbooks and accompanying videos to help our development, design, and construction communities make net zero energy ready buildings a reality before they are required throughout the province in 2032. This playbook and video, developed by UBC and Zebex, is about life cycle assessment practice to estimate embodied carbon in buildings. Hello, my name is Diana and I'm a research coordinator at the University of British Columbia Sustainability Initiative. Today, I will be talking about the practice of performing life cycle assessment to estimate embodied carbon emission in buildings. The building sector is a big contributor of greenhouse gases. It is responsible for 39% of all global emissions. Of that 39%, more than one third are embodied emissions related to the building materials and construction. Also, as operational emissions in buildings are reduced, embodied emissions are becoming proportionately more significant. In recent years, the building industry has adopted Life Cycle Assessment, or LCA, as a framework to quantify potential environmental impacts associated with a building's life cycle. From the resource extraction, material manufacturing, transportation and construction, to the operations and deconstruction of the building at the end of their service life. LCAs can help project teams estimate and reduce embodied emissions and understand carbon hotspots to inform design decisions, among other many applications. They can also be applied to whole buildings or their individual components. Carbon emissions is only one of the environmental impacts that LCA can estimate. These are indicated by the Global Warming Potential Impact category. Other environmental impact categories that can be estimated include smog formation potential and ozone depletion potential. The practice of conducting LCA is governed by a set of international, European and North American standards. And these are some examples from the International Standard Organization and the European Committee for Standardization. These standards form the backbone of the LCA methodology. Many sustainable building certifications in Canada are now addressing embodied carbon. For example, the Zero Carbon Building Standard and the Living Building Challenge have mandatory requirements for reporting, reducing, and offsetting emissions. LEED has an optional emission reduction target. Building regulations are following the trend of sustainable building certifications by incorporating requirements to report embodied emissions. For example, the City of Vancouver requires calculation and disclosure of LCA results for new buildings that require a rezoning permit and will require reduction in the future. And the federal government, through the Greening Government Strategy, has outlined requirements for future disclosure and reduction of embodied emissions. Although some of these policies have future provisions for carbon reductions, the current regulatory requirements in Canada are for reporting only. As outlined in the ISO LCA standard, the LCA process can be divided into four phases. Goal and scope definition, life cycle inventory analysis, life cycle impact assessment, and interpretation of LCA results. These phases don't necessarily happen in sequence, and there can be feedback between them along the way. In the first phase, we need to determine the goal or purpose of the LCA, as well as the study scope and other parameters. This goal should guide the rest of the parameters. Results can vary widely based on these parameters. Therefore, it is important to define them clearly prior to starting the assessment. The second phase consists of compiling and quantifying inputs and outputs of the building throughout its life cycle. For building LCAs, we usually quantify the materials and products within the building and then use software tools to estimate the rest of the flows. For example, to assess a 2x4 stud wall, the number of studs and their dimensions are calculated and input into the tool. The tool then calculates the energy and resources consumed to cut down the trees to source the wood, transport to sawmill, 
process into lumber, transport to construction site, maintain and replace the stud, and at the end, dispose or recycle it at the end of the building's life cycle. The third phase includes evaluating the potential environmental impacts of the flows from the previous phase. This phase is also completed using the same software tool that calculates these impacts using data from different databases. As we saw before, when estimating embodied carbon, we use the global warming potential impact category. But software tools can usually also calculate the other impact categories. In the interpretation phase, results are analyzed in the context of the assessment goal and scope from phase one. Some of the considerations that should be addressed are identifying issues from the LCI and the LCIA, like data limitations, assumptions, and exclusions, as well as evaluating the LCA study itself for consistency and completeness, and any other conclusions, limitations, and recommendations. As we saw in the framework, the first step is usually establishing the LCA goal. The goal states the intended application for the study. For example, to assess and compare different building materials, or to demonstrate compliance with a building certification or regulation. The goal can also include the reason for carrying out the study and the intended audience. Also, depending on the goal, the assessment may be conducted at different points in time during the project design or construction process. We call this project timing. It is important to identify appropriate level of project development that best supports the purpose of the LCA. For example, an assessment based on early design documents could be useful for project teams to select between different design options, but would not be able to assess the actual building's environmental impacts. In contrast, one based on detailed as-built documents provides a more accurate estimate of the environmental impacts, which is better suited for reporting on performance, but then the building design is set by them. After establishing the LCA goal, we can define the rest of the parameters. We usually start by defining the scope. This consists of the objective assessment, which refers to the building components to be included, the life cycle stages that will be assessed, also known as system boundary, and the reference study period. In addition, if we're doing a comparative analysis to demonstrate emission reduction, a functional equivalent should also be defined. This would be a building, actual or theoretical, that would act as a baseline to which the proposed building would be compared. Depending on the goal, building LCAs can consider the whole building, also known as whole building LCA, or can include parts of the building, like an individual assembly or a material. There is no universal definition for whole building LCAs, but they would typically consist of the building structure, envelope and interior elements, and exclude MEP systems, equipment, and furnishings. The object of assessment can also be predetermined by policy. LCA studies analyze the building throughout its life cycle, which is broken down into life cycle stages. The life cycle stages start with the production of the materials and components, then the construction of the building, followed by the user operation of the building, and the deconstruction at the end of its service life. Some studies also consider the benefits and loads beyond the building life, which refers to the positive impacts for reusing and recycling the building materials and also energy recovery through carbon sequestration. For embodied carbon assessment purposes, the use life cycle stage includes impacts for maintenance, repair and replacement of components, but excludes the actual operational energy and water uses, which would otherwise be part of the stage. The reference study period is the period over which the building is assessed. This period can align with the required service life of the building or can be set by policy at some other service life. Most buildings in North America have a required service life ranging from 50 to 100 years or sometimes even less. After establishing the scope, the next step is to source the information about the building's assemblies and material quantities. The data sources can be classified by level of accuracy into primary, project specific, product-specific, and secondary. Primary and project-specific data sources will deliver the most detailed and accurate information about the building. Secondary sources are not project-dependent and are only approximations and industry averages. Project-specific data is the most common source used to conduct LCAs and can be complemented by product-specific and secondary data. However, the most appropriate data source to use depends on the LCA purpose, the project timing, and the availability of information. For example, 
For buildings in the planning and early design phase, it may be necessary to use secondary data for some materials. For buildings nearing completion, project-specific and primary data should be available through project documentation like drawings, BIM models, or cost estimates. To conduct building LCAs, we need a software tool to complete the inventory analysis and impact assessment. There is a wide variety of tools that differ according to the life cycle stages that they can assess, the input methods that they use, the format they display the information in, and the databases they run in the background to calculate the impacts. For example, some tools require direct input of the building materials and quantities, while other tools can be integrated into modeling software to source the data directly from a BIM model. Or the databases. Some tools use public databases and others create their own using proprietary databases. The tools should be chosen based on the LCA parameters we have touched on. As we saw from the framework and parameters, the LCA process requires multiple steps before importing the information into a tool and calculating the impacts. This process generally follows these four steps. Although the sequence in which these steps happen and the specific tasks in each one can vary and overlap depending on the tool. The first two steps refer to the sourcing, extraction, calculation, and organization of the building's material quantities and characteristics. In step one, you extract and process the data, for example, from architectural drawings through quantity takeoffs, and end up with a list of raw data. In step two, this data is organized and formed into the building's bill of materials. For example, raw data might display the wall surface area, we then need to estimate the number of wood studs within each wall based on the spacing and dimensions of the studs and the number and dimension of all the walls. And with this information, we can now calculate the total volume of wood studs in the entire building. The building bill of materials can now be input into the tool in steps three and four. This requires knowledge and experience from the user to find the appropriate materials or a suitable alternative to map the building materials with those available in the tool's database. Some materials won't have an exact match in the tool, so we must determine an acceptable alternative for substitution. This can be done by finding the closest similar product or sometimes by adapting the units that some materials are in to match the ones in the tool. This new list is the modified bill of materials that will be assessed by the tool in step four. The output bill of materials is different from the modified bill in that it can include waste factors and other additions from the tool after the impacts are calculated. Each tool has its own way of displaying the assessment results. Results may be broken down by building element, material type, life cycle stage, or other. Results can also be given in actual impacts or proportional to the total impacts of the building in percentage form. We can also calculate the impacts, like the kilograms of CO2 equivalent, for example, by gross floor area in the building or by occupants. Displaying results as a rate enables easier comparison between different buildings or to a baseline building or functional equivalent. Attention should be given as to how the tool generates the output reports to ensure it will provide the results in the form and level of granularity that is useful for the purpose of the LCA. After conducting an LCA, the inputs, including the data, methods, and assumptions, and the assessment results should be reported and interpreted in accordance to the LCA goal and scope. Interpreting the results allows us to explain data limitations, reach conclusions, and if it's the case, provide recommendations to decision makers or demonstrate achievement of performance targets. LCAs estimate potential environmental effects in broad categories, such as the potential contributions to global warming from activities that occur throughout the building's life cycle. The assessment does not measure direct impacts from those specific activities on aspects like human health, resource availability, and ecosystem quality. For example, we can estimate the potential global warming contribution from the standard manufacturing process of a building material, but we cannot measure the effects of that global warming contribution on local ecosystems or on human health. In addition, although LCA is an increasingly standardized practice, there will always be uncertainty associated with the results. This is because the process involves making assumptions about future considerations and using a large amount of data from different sources and databases. However, LCA's value is not in the precision of the calculations, but rather in the notion 
of estimating the environmental footprint of a building under design, construction, or operation. There is a wide variety of decisions that the project teams can make when designing buildings. LCAs are a tool that can help us weigh options and make decisions by measuring the impact of the design choices. But the strategies for embodied carbon reduction, such as material choices, are what actually reduces the embodied carbon at the building. Some other strategies used to reduce embodied carbon in buildings include using less material in a building and selecting durable materials that have a lower replacement rate. So that's an outline of how LCAs can be used to calculate embodied carbon. For more information about this topic, please see the full playbook on the Zebex website. This presentation is part of the Zebex Net Zero Energy Ready Playbook series.